Hello, this is Mr. Chabry, and we are here with another narrated Pokemon battle. So, this is a battle against GamerMZ. Seems like most of the time, whenever we have a battle with GamerMZ, it turns out to be a really nice battle, and this battle is no exception. So, looking at my opponent's team, there's a few Pokemon that do scare me. Charizard X and Snorlax, mainly, because if they get set up, they can do a lot of damage. So, looking at my team, my team is mostly an OU team. I've been wanting to try out... Mega Garchomp, and I have the Tyranitar there to give the Sand Stream. So Mega Garchomp Sand Force will be bringing more power to the table. I'm going to lead off with Zapdos, as my opponent will lead off with Landris, and I'm just going to go Hidden Power Ice because that would be really nice to hit this Landris. But my opponent's actually going to go into Mimikyu. This is actually a Choice Specs Zapdos, so. Yeah, this thing is going to do a lot of damage if we can get it to hit something pretty hard. Um, I'm going to switch out here. I think keeping Zapdos alive would be really nice. And I'm going to be bringing Heatran. So Heatran is a really nice Pokemon to bring in, especially now that I see my opponents going for the Let's Snuggle Forever. So this is a pretty cool animation here that Mimikyu's signature Z-Move has. Of course, Mimikyu... As you know, want some lovin's. It, it feels so lonely. So what Let's Snuggle Forever will do is Mimikyu will jump through the trees and then get a big hug. Of course, Heatran's sweating, but I don't think Heatran should be sweating because this is not going to do that much to Heatran. Heatran has wonderful bulk, and since this is a fairy-type move, it's not going to be doing much at all because Heatran times four resist fairy so um mimikyu is not going to stay in at least we got rid of that disguise that's a pretty pretty nice thing and lando is going to come back and heatran does not want to face down lando i'm going to just go for magma storm um i do not have a steel type move on this one um i have earth power and magma storm and i think i've got taunt and toxic as well I'm just going to go Magma Storm, and I am not staying in on this thing because an Earthquake will completely devastate my Heatran. And I'm going to go into Tang Growth because I feel like that's the safest play, um, mainly because of this, because of this Rock Slide. I did not want to take a Rock Slide on my Zapdos, but now Lando's going to be swapped out, I guess expecting Hidden Power Ice. Um, of course, my opponent did get a crit, and that's kind of unfortunate because... This Tangrowth is my um, physical wall. I'm just going to go Giga Drain so I can get some health back as the Mana Buzz does come in. Um, I didn't really want to, you know, risk going for Hidden Power Ice anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's why I went for Giga Drain. And here I'm going to go into Heatran as Mana Buzz goes for a Toxic. So that's a pretty nice switch in. Um, I know Mana Buzz is known for, you know, Toxic stalling. So that's why I went to Heatran there. And I'm just going to go for another Magma Storm. Mandibuzz is stuck in now. And it's going to try to go for a Foul Play. Foul Play is not going to do that much to Heatran. I mean, it does a considerable amount. But I think Heatran is going to be able to 1v1 this. But we miss the Magma Storm. So that's actually going to hurt us a little bit. Because Mandibuzz is going to get to Roost up. And it's going to be able to, you know, send some more chip damage to my Heatran. So, I'm just going to go for a Toxic. And we missed the Toxic as well. So, we missed the Magma Storm. We missed the Toxic. We're not having that much luck at this point in the battle. Of course, Mandibuzz is losing some health from the Magma Storm. And here, I'm not going to stay in. Heatran has missed so many times... I'm just going to swap into my Tyranitar. Tyranitar resists um, Brave Bird, resist Foul Play. You know, most of the things that that Mandibuzz goes for, um, it resists. So I'm going to go into Tyranitar. I'm going to go for Stone Edge. But we missed the Stone Edge. So we have missed three moves in a row. So right now things are not looking good. And Tyranitar is going to take the Toxic. I'm not too worried but i mean i probably should be because tyranitar is pretty useful here i'm going to finally land a move here and we finally land that stone edge so we finally take down this this you know pretty annoying pokemon mandibuzz i've used it quite a bit um i know 
it's kind of hard to take out. But now Mimikyu is going to come in, and I am not going to stay in on a Mimikyu. Tyranitar will be completely destroyed. I'm going to go into my Toxapex, because Toxapex can take any Fairy-type move, as Mimikyu is actually just going to go for a Swords Dance. So, now this thing is at plus 2 attack, and it could be a threat... Um, it's going to go for Shadow Claw, and I'm hoping it doesn't do that much, as Toxapex takes that really nicely. And I'm just going to fire off a Haze, because I do not want Mimikyu getting a sweep. So I'm going to go ahead, Haze, bring that attack stat back down, and now this thing's going to go for another Shadow Claw. It doesn't do that much. I'm going to go for Scald, hoping for the burn. I don't have a Poison-type move on this thing, and we get the burn. So, yeah, this is actually looking nice now. Um, we have the burn. Toxapex came in and hazed this thing, so we're looking really, really nice. And now I can go back into my Heatran, um, as this thing actually goes for Wood Hammer. So Heatran does not even care about your Wood Hammer. Um, Heatran resists that very nicely. Um, of course, it's not Stab. And the Mimikyu is going to go for one last Swords Dance, maybe, because, um, I think my opponent knows... There's no point in keeping this thing alive, but we missed the Magma Storm. So that means Mimikyu gets to at least fire off a Shadow Claw, and that's going to not take out Heatran, but we miss another Magma Storm. So how many Magma Storms was that? Four? Five? I don't know. I'm going to swap out Heatran because I think keeping Heatran alive is pretty nice. I'm going to go into my Tangrowth here as another Shadow Claw comes out. And Tank Growth takes that really nice. Like I said, Tank Growth is my defensive wall. It takes that beautifully. But now Mimikyu's just going to go for a play rough. One last ditch effort to get some sort of chip damage. Tank Growth does not care about chip damage because it does have the regenerator ability. That means it's going to be healing a lot when I just switch it out. So now Mimikyu finally succumbs to the burn, which Mimikyu actually did more damage than I would have hoped because... I could have just taken it out with a Magma Storm, but we missed over and over and over and over. But now Landris is going to come back in, and I'm going to stay in and sack off my Tang Growth. It did really well. Looking at the rest of the Pokemon on my opponent's team, um, of course there's a lot of Pokemon on my opponent's team that could use Tang Growth to set up on, like Mega Charizard, like um, Snorlax, you know. They could set up pretty easily on Tang Growth if I'm not careful. But now, I'm going to bring in my Toxapex as my opponent's going to go into the Hitmon Lee. And my opponent's going to just go for a fake out, get the normal gym boost. Toxapex takes that really nicely, but now a knockoff is headed our way, and Toxapex gets hit with a crit. So that's very, 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 very unfortunate, but I'm going to go for Scald, hoping for a burn, and we get it. So now, there's some luck being balanced out, because we got the burn on this thing, and that's really nice. I'm going to have to switch out because Toxapex is so low on health that it's not going to be worth keeping it in. I'm going to go into my Tyranitar, and the main reason is I just want to get the sand up. Um, I know Hitmonlee could easily take this thing out, but yeah, I knew my opponent probably wouldn't go for a fighting move right there. Um, I just really needed the sand up, and we've got the sand up. So now Hitmonlee is burnt, and that's really helping out quite a bit. And I'm going to actually bring Tyranitar back, go back into Toxapex, expecting a fighting-type move now. As, yes, Hitmonlee is going to go for the close combat, and this way I can actually slowly heal Toxapex back up with that Regenerator ability. So now we have Toxapex in here. Hitmonlee is burnt, and both of our Pokemon are slowly losing health. But what I'm going to do here is actually stay in as the Hitmonlee does go ahead, go for a close combat. I guess expecting me to try to pivot back into Tyranitar to slowly um, let this thing go down into its burn. But what I'm going to actually do is go for the recover. I was hoping that Toxapex would live, and it does. And that's so, so wonderful at this point because my Toxapex can still come in handy, especially with that Haze, since my opponent does have Snorlax and does have Mega Charizard. Now my opponent's going to swap out the Hitmonlee, go into the Big Teddy, and what I'm going to do here is just go for Recover. Um, I did not want to go for Scald because 
there is a good chance this thing has facade. I know a lot of Snorlaxes carry facade. I know Gamer MZ's favorite Snorlax that he brings does have facade. And I'm going to go for Haze, expecting Snorlax to be faster, but actually Toxapex is faster. So, um, yeah, this thing's going to fire off a facade, showing me, yes, it's a good idea not to go for Scald on this thing. And I'm going to have to switch out, because I do not want to poison this thing. I can't even poison it. I don't want to burn this thing. It just hurt me that much. And I can go back into Tyranitar and get my sand back up. And that's what I'm going to do. Go back into Tyranitar, get the sand back up. Tyranitar takes the facade very well. And we're going to try to start firing back onto this big teddy. So now I'm going to go for a crunch mainly to lower this thing's defense. Get some sort of chip damage as... This thing's going to go for a cycle. I'm guessing my opponent thought that I would bring it down to where its berry would activate. But the sandstorm actually brings it down to where it activates. So that was a wasted recycle. But yeah, recycle on this thing is a hard thing to, you know, take out. Especially if you don't have something with knockoff. I'm going to go for Stone Edge hoping to get some sort of damage back on it. As now Big Teddy's going to find that berry again that it just ate. And it's going to eat it again, so this thing is going to be a little bit harder than I'd hope to take out. That's the thing about Snorlax. It does have pretty good bulk. But now my Tyranitar will go down to the poison, and that's just what I needed because now I can go into my Garchomp. And it's time for Garchomp to do some damage here. Um, this is, like I said, my Mega Garchomp. Mega Garchomp is a Pokemon that I think... It should get some sort of love. I mean, I know it's technically not as good as regular Garchomp in in terms of it's slower, um, but it does have better defense. It does have better attack. So I'm going to go for a Swords Dance. That will boost my attack more than the Stockpile will boost this Norlax's defense. And now what I can do is go for an Earthquake. Earthquake will be boosted by the Sandstorm. That's the good thing about Sand Force. It will boost ground, rock, still type moves, I think. But I'm going to go for that here as the Snorlax is going to eat its berry once again. Um, that's one. That, that berry's been eaten a few times. Um, but now I'm thinking, I'm hoping that we can take this thing out because the Sandstorm is gone. And now Big Teddy's going to be swapped out and Lando's going to come in for the Intimidate. And probably expecting my Garchomp to go for another Earthquake, which this time I'm actually going to go for Dragon Claw, um, hoping for maybe a crit or something, as that ends up being the right play on this Lando. So we take out the Lando, but now the Mega Charizard X comes in, and my opponent's going to, right off the bat, not Mega Evolve, <laughs> not, not Mega Evolve because it's worried about taking super effective Earthquake, maybe even super effective dragon move. I'm going to go for Dragon Claw, and it is enough still to take out Charizard in its base form, so we take that thing out. So now Hitmonlee is going to come back in for some fake out pressure, and that's what it's going to go for. Just go for fake out, get some sort of chip damage. It is burnt, however, so Hitmonlee doesn't have that much left in its canister that it can take, so we're just going to Dragon Claw this thing and take it out. So now that just leaves Big Teddy the Snorlax. And it's time for Mega Garchomp to get some love. That's what it's doing here. It's going to take out Snorlax because the Snorlax no longer has a stockpile boost. And Mega Garchomp just got a sweep. Think about that. Not a lot of people use Mega Garchomp because it's cons considerably not as good as Base Garchomp. But we just got a sweep with it. That's the thing about Mega Garchomp's attack stat. It's really nice, really wonderful. And in this battle, Mega Garchomp was the MVP. So if you like this, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you in the next Pokemon video.